Agastya Rishi was a very renowned sage in Hinduism. From conquering mountains to draining the seas, Agastya Rishi had immense power over nature. It was due to his highly elevated spiritual state that he had achieved the position of Saptarishi, one of the seven sages who played a crucial role in the shaping of the early Vedic traditions and spiritual knowledge. The birth of Agastya Rishi actually begins with an incident between King Nimi and Vashishtha. King Nimi, the ruler of Videha and a prosperous king, was loved by his subjects. He had appointed Vashishtha as his guru and royal priest. One day, Nimi decided to perform a 5,000-year-long yagya to increase his fame. He invited all the famous Brahmins and sages. But his Guru Vashishtha was already committed to a 500-year yagya for Lord Indra. King Nimi did not want to wait. Thus, instead of waiting, he decided to start the yagya with Gautam Rishi instead. After 500 years, when Vashishtha completed Indra's yagya and returned to Nimi, he saw the yagya being performed by someone else. Vashishtha was enraged by the king's behavior. He confronted Nimi and cursed him that his mortal body would be destroyed. Nimi's anger knew no bounds. He cursed the sage in return, saying that he abandoned his disciple to perform the yagya for someone who was more powerful, thus displaying partiality. He cursed back sage Vashishta with the same end of losing his mortal body. A desperate Vashishta approached his father Brahma for help. Brahma responded, Go enter the bodies of Mitra and Varuna. Stay there and soon you will be reborn. Vashishta bowed down and went to Varuna Lok. His body soon left him and his soul entered the bodies of Mitra and Varuna. Once, the heavenly Apsara Urvashi went to Varuna Lok with her friends. When Mitra and Varuna saw Urvashi, they immediately fell for her. Their semen fell into a jar from which Agastya and his brother Vashishtha were born. They were adopted by the king of Ikshavaku. Agastya grew up to be a famous ascetic, devoting his life to penance and austerities. He learned the scriptures and the art of using the bow and the arrow. Once, on his way to Swargalok, he found a group of people hanging upside down from a tree. Rishi Agastya was surprised and asked the reason for their pitiable state. The people replied that they were in fact the ancestors of Rishi Agastya and he was the reason behind their misery. They mentioned that because Rishi Agastya was unmarried and childless, there was nobody after him who could offer them oblations, and hence they were in such a state. Agastya had never thought of marriage and children before, but he agreed to get married and have children for the sake of his ancestors. Meanwhile, the king of Vidharba wanted to have a child. Rishi Agastya knew that his destiny of being a married man lied here and blessed the king to have a child. The king was soon blessed with a daughter and he named her Lopamudra. Lopamudra grew into a beautiful and intellectual princess. As she reached a marriageable age, the king of Vidharba began looking for a suitable groom for his daughter. At that time, sage Agastya approached the king and asked for his daughter's hand in marriage. The king was in a dilemma. He did not want his beautiful daughter to marry an ascetic who lived in the forest. Lopamudra told her father that she wanted to marry Agastya, and hence the king accepted and Agastya was wedded to Lopamudra. Lopamudra was a chaste wife and duly took care of all the needs of her husband. However, Rishi Agastya got engrossed in his austerities and forgot all about Lopamudra. Dejected, Lopamudra composed a hymn demanding his love and attention. This made Rishi Agastya realize that he had forgotten his duty towards her and his ancestors and changed his ways. 
so he decided to have a child with Lopamudra. Lopamudra, however, demanded enough wealth to raise a child, but Agastya was a poor sage. He went to the wealthy king Shrutavarna. The king respectfully welcomed Agastya to his kingdom. Agastya then requested some money from the king. The king was ready to give away any sum of money that the sage asked for. However, when Agastya saw that Shrutavarna's income was equal to his expenditure, he realized that if he took any amount of money, the people in his kingdom would suffer. He then went to other kings like Vadriyashava and Thrasadasyu, but their kingdoms were running short of funds as well. Agastya and the three kings all decided to approach a rich asura named Ilvala. Ilvala had once approached a Brahmin and asked for a powerful son, but the Brahmin hadn't fulfilled his request. Since then, Ilvala and his brother Vatapi hated Brahmins. Every time a Brahmin visited their kingdom, Vatapi would transform into a goat. Ilvala would then serve the goat to the Brahmins, saying that they were offerings from the Yajna. The Brahmins would eat the goat in their ignorance. Vatapi would then rip open the Brahmin's stomach and emerge. In this way, the two evil brothers had killed dozens of Brahmins. When Agastya and the kings reached Ilvala's kingdom, Ilvala welcomed them. He served them a scrumptious meal consisting of the hidden goat and other foods. However, Agastya knew of Ilvala's intentions. He ate the entirety of the goat. Ilvala noticed that Agastya only burped and Vatapi did not come out. Realizing Agastya's power, Ilvala fell at the feet of Agastya and promised to give him whatever he wanted. Agastya demanded golds, horses, chariots and cows for himself and the kings. Reluctantly, Ilvala gave these riches to Agastya and the kings. Now, with enough to raise a family, Agastya's wife agreed to have a child. Soon, a son named Dridyasu was born to them, and thus Rishi Agastya's ancestors were relieved from their state and ascended to the heavenly skies. When the child was born, Agastya left his wife and returned to his life as a sage. After Indra killed the Asura Vritra, he wanted to renounce his kingship because of the guilt of killing a Brahmin. But the Devas convinced him to stay. Meanwhile, Vritra's followers, known as the Kalakeyas, all entered the ocean and hid there. In the ocean, they plotted the destruction of the universe. They realized that the Rishis were the most powerful people in the universe. Their immense austerities and penance gave them a lot of power. They decided that if they wanted to succeed, they had to kill the Rishis first. Thus, every night, they would emerge from the ocean and steadily kill the Rishis. Every morning, the earth would be littered with the dead bodies, bones and remains of the Rishis. Indra and the Devas became distressed and approached Lord Vishnu for advice. Lord Vishnu said, the only way to kill them is to destroy the ocean. Go to Agastya, he is the only one capable of drinking up the ocean. Thus, the Devas approached Agastya and conveyed their request. Agastya agreed and together they all went to the banks of the ocean. Agastya began drinking up the ocean and the Devas watched it in awe. When the ocean was completely bereft of water, the Kalakeyas were revealed. The Devas rushed at the Kalakeyas and began slaughtering them. The Kalakeyas could not defend themselves and they perished. The Devas turned to Agastya and told him to release the water in his body and fill up the ocean once again. But Agastya had digested the water already. The Devas were astonished. They had solved the problem of the Kalakeyas, but now they were faced with another problem. They went to Lord Brahma, who asked them to be patient. He said, after many years, 
the great king Bhagirath will fill up the oceans and bring down the river Ganga to liberate his ancestors. To know the full story of how King Bhagirath brought Ganga on earth, watch the video linked in the comments below. Legend has it that one sage Narad went to the Vindhya mountains. During the meeting with Vindhya, sage Narad praised the mightiness of Mount Meru. He said that Meru has become very proud and considers himself to be the highest mountain. To teach Mount Meru a lesson, the Vindhya started to grow its peak. Soon, the height of the mountain began to block the sun's rays on earth. Devas became worried as sunlight did not reach all parts of the earth. They approached sage Agastya for a solution and he promised to help them. He travelled from his ashram in the Himalayas and reached the Vindhyas. Vindhyas and the other mountain peaks immediately bowed down, reducing their size, offering their respects to the sage. They also allowed him to pass to the south side. Agastya told the Vindhya mountains that he was going to the southern India and that Vindhya should remain in the same posture until he returns to go back to north. Agastya then set up an ashram in southern India and stayed there. Vindhyas never raised its peak and remained in the same posture. According to the Skanda Puran, the whole world visited the Himalayas when Shiva was about to wed Parvati. This caused an imbalance that led the earth to tip on one side. Lord Shiva said, O sage Agastya, kindly go south and restore the balance of the earth. When the sage heard the words of Lord Shiva, he was disappointed. Like others present there, he also wanted to take part in the celestial event. Shiva, understanding his devotee's disappointment, blessed him that him and Parvati would appear in front of the sage whenever he wished to see them. He also gave him Divya Drishti to see the wedding on the Himalayas, irrespective of wherever he stayed. Thus, Agastya migrated down south. Muni Agastya also finds his mention in several Puranas, like the Ramayana and Mahabharat. Ram, Lakshman and Sita met sage Agastya during their 14-year exile. As mentioned in the scriptures, Agastya played a very good host to them and Lopamudra also gifted her divine ornaments to Sita. Ram along with his brother also built an ashram on the banks of river Godavari as instructed by the sage. While there are many other stories of sage Agastya in the holy texts, these were some of the prominent stories. Muni Agastya is also known for his immense contribution in the welfare of humankind. Agastya is credited with composing hymns in the Rig Veda, one of the oldest and most important texts in Hinduism. His hymns reflect his deep spiritual insight and knowledge. Agastya is believed to have played a crucial role in shaping and developing the Tamil language. He is considered one of the Siddhars, ancient sages who contributed to the evolution of Tamil literature and grammar. Agastya is recognized for his contributions to Ayurveda, the traditional Indian system of medicine. He is said to have shared knowledge about medicinal plants, healing techniques and the holistic approach to health and wellness. Agastya is associated with various yogic practices and the discovery of certain mystical powers known as Siddhis. He is also attributed with the creation of several powerful mantras that hold significance in spiritual practices. Agastya's teaching and discourses have been passed down through ages. His insights into the nature of reality, the self and the divine continue to inspire spiritual seekers. Agastya's life and teachings have left an indelible mark on the Indian culture. His stories convey through epics, scriptures and folklore emphasize the values of knowledge, humility and the pursuit of truth.